Hey all, it's Chris Daniels, aka CD Play is Zero. Today we're going to share the ultimate flat face fingerboards rendezvous guide. For those of you who stumbled on this video, you may be wondering, what is the rendezvous? The flat face fingerboard rendezvous is a renowned fingerboarding event in the United States hosted in Northern Massachusetts. Hosted semi-annually, aka twice a year, fingerboarders from all over the world head over to Drake at Massachusetts for a chance to session with hundreds of other fingerboarders. To understand the rendezvous, it helps to understand its history. Founded by Flatface Fingerboards owner Mike Schneider back in April of 2007, it was modeled after the events that were done in Germany. You should understand that prior to the rendezvous, fingerboard meetups were a very uncommon occurrence in North America, with maybe a handful of fingerboarders meeting up together at most. The first flat face rendezvous was hosted at Mike Schneider's home, and it was attended by a handful of fingerboarders, including a young Taylor Rosenbauer. The event quickly made waves on the online forum, and each subsequent event grew exponentially. The second rendezvous saw legends such as Ethan Ebeling, Tim Hurley, Doug Bodkin, Jay Linehan, Taylor Lucas, who came from Canada, and Brandon Jones who came all the way from Texas. We already started to see people traveling over a thousand miles to join in on the fun. The turnout continued to grow when in November of 2008, Rendezvous 5 outgrew the Schneider household. Over 150 people attended this event, which was also the first one that I attended. I came all the way from Seattle, Washington, across the country, to go to Rendezvous 5. This was the first event to be held in a venue and not at Mike Schneider's home. Rendezvous 6 marked another monumental event. Black River, the pioneers of professional fingerboarding, journeyed from Germany to the United States to attend. It marked the blending of the North American and European scenes. It also normalized international travel for fingerboarding. The event continued to outgrow venues, eventually settling on its current location in Dracut, Massachusetts. As of October of 2022, there have been 31 rendezvous events, with the 32nd being hosted next month in November of 2022. As far as I'm aware, no other major fingerboard event has been held more times than the rendezvous. Like Fast Fingers, rendezvous has become a pilgrimage for fingerboarders from all over the world to attend. And now that we've covered a little bit on the rendezvous history, let's look at where to stay. There's no place to stay really in Drake at Massachusetts itself. There are a handful of Verbos and Airbnb spots, but I imagine those will get booked really quick. And to be honest, your best bet is probably to stay in one of the towns nearby. The first option and the closest option is to stay in Lowell, Massachusetts. Drakett's proximity to Lowell makes it a good choice for those that do not have a car. There is the Sonesta Select Boston Lowell Chelmsford, which is about a 20 minute drive away from the venue. Another option in Lowell is the Best Western Plus Chelmsford Inn, which is again about a 20 minute drive to the venue. In Tewksbury, there's a lot of options here. They have a Fairfield Inn, a Residence Inn, and a Holiday Inn. And this is due to its location. It's a professional hub, so they have a bunch of hotels all in one area. The other option is Andover, Massachusetts. Like Tewksbury, there's a handful of hotels on a campus along the Merrimack River. This includes Residence Inn, Spring Hill Suites, a Double Tree, La Quinta, another Sonesta, and a Marriott Courtyard. For me personally, I've always chose to stay in Andover, Massachusetts. Its proximity um, makes it really convenient to get to both Drake at Massachusetts, and I also love the town of Andover as well. I find the town quaint and enjoyable. However, I would not recommend this to somebody who is relying on public transportation. The good news is that rideshare options make it really easy to get around in this area. To get to Drake at Massachusetts, where the rendezvous is hosted, it's about a $25 to $30 lift, and it takes about 25 to 30 minutes to get there via car. Okay, so now that we have places to stay, let's check out how do we get to the rendezvous. The current location for the rendezvous 
is 54 Chuck Drive in Dracut, Massachusetts. If you're like me and have to travel by plane to get to the area, you have two airport options. The first option is Manchester, New Hampshire, which is about a 40 to 45 minute commute without traffic. The other option is Boston, Massachusetts, Logan International Airport, which is 50 plus minute commute without traffic. I've always gone into Logan. I have not come from Manchester yet. It's really easy for my location just to fly nonstop to Logan. With Manchester, I'd have to catch a connection. I think it's easier to travel from Logan International Airport uh, via public transportation. Obviously, if you have a ability to take a shuttle or to have an Uber take you all the way up and you have no problem paying for that, you can do that. However, typically what I do is I take public transportation from Boston Logan Airport and take that all the way up to Andover, Massachusetts area. I'd recommend driving or carpooling with a friend if possible. But if you can't, then a rideshare platform really makes it easy to commute from the hotel over to the rendezvous event. In fact, I would not recommend taking public transportation from the hotels over to the event. You certainly can if you really want a penny pinch. But to be honest, I think it's going to be like $15 to do any of those hotels over up to Drake at Massachusetts anyway, since all the transfers you have to take. You might as well just pay for a Lyft or an Uber. It costs like $10 more. All right, coming up next, what to expect and what to bring to the event. Depending on how long you're staying, you may need to bring a small suitcase. For me, since I'm doing multiple nights, luckily I'm able to usually fit all my stuff into a backpack that contains my fingerboard equipment and my camera equipment. Again, I take public transportation up north. I usually try to travel light. I'd also recommend if you do skateboard, bring in that skateboard. So many fingerboarders skateboard and it's a great time and you may be able to enjoy a great session if the weather permits it. Speaking of weather, I highly recommend bringing a jacket and even multiple layers of clothes. The rendezvous was held in the fall and spring. Weather in Massachusetts in general can be very. I've been to a rendezvous where it's sunny and warm outside and in the 60s. And then I've also been to the rendezvous where it's been freezing in wind. And it also has been known to snow in both November and April in Massachusetts. I'd recommend keeping any personal items containing valuables locked inside of a trunk of a vehicle. There have been incidences in the past of theft, so it's better to keep important items safe and sound than it is to lose an important item. You can always exit the rendezvous to grab an item when you need it. All right, so you're at the rendezvous. What do we do at the rendezvous? The event starts at noon and it ends at around 5.30 p.m. I'd recommend showing up a little bit early and grabbing lunch or a snack nearby. There's plenty of time to fingerboard. It will be packed. There are hundreds of fingerboarders in the space and a couple dollars in parks. The rendezvous is an exercise in patience. Sometimes you'll just need to stake out a spot and then claim it for a bit. And sometimes you'll have a little tiny kid barge in front of you and take over. It's okay, it happens to all of us. My recommendation is to chat up with people, hang out with them, focus on building relationships with your fellow fingerboarders. I can't remember any tricks that I learned at these events, even those that are on camera. However, I can tell you the names of all the amazing people that I've met and where they're from. If you see someone land an insane trick that you can't do yet, go up to them and ask them how they did that trick. Someone's setup catches your eye, chat them up, find out what it is, and maybe you have a new favorite company. You will see fingerboard icons there. You will see fingerboard legends there. Most, if not all, are approachable and friendly, but be sure to give them space if they look occupied. In terms of food, there's usually pizza and drinks that are sold at the rendezvous. However, there's also several businesses located in the same complex. If you're 21 and over, there's a couple taverns, one on each end of that complex that's just outside of the warehouse. There's also a Chinese restaurant, two Italian pizzerias, a diner, and then there's also a Dunkin' Donuts across the street. With that in mind, if you have any dietary restrictions, I highly recommend planning accordingly. What can I expect to spend at the rendezvous? I mean, it depends on your situation. You know, for me, I'm coming from Seattle to Boston. I've seen flights as cheap as $200. I've also seen flights as expensive as $650. It just really depends on airline deals and when you book it. Hotel-wise, it's pretty varied. Um, I've seen hotels as low as $90, but also as high as $250 per night. So for me, I always budget about $200 per night. Be sure to remember that hotels place an extra hold on cards. 
and be sure to use a credit card, not a debit if possible. If you do use a debit card, make sure you have plenty of room on your card to charge. For a rideshare from the airport one way, from Boston Logan International Airport to Lowell, Massachusetts, you're looking at anywhere from $70 to $100. From Manchester to Lowell, you're looking anywhere from 60 to 80 bucks. Now from Lowell or Andover to Drake at Massachusetts, you're looking at spending anywhere between $20 to $35 one way on a ride. What about a car rental? So, you know, looking it up at Boston International Airport, I was seeing anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks per day. Obviously, they say 60 bucks a day on the rentals online for certain cars. I promise you that's not the actual price and you're gonna be spending quite a bit more than that, which is why I say allocate at least 100 to 150 bucks per day on that. So let's say you wanna be really inexpensive for a trip. I'd recommend doing public transportation up. It takes a quite a bit more time to get up north, but it's also considerably less expensive. And if you like to travel, riding on public transportation can be fun. So from Logan International Airport up to Lowell, Massachusetts, you're looking at about 20 bucks to get up there. Then when you get to the train station in Lowell, you can take a quick Uber over to one of the hotels. And that varies between 10 bucks to 15 bucks to get from the Lowell train station over to one of the hotels in Lowell, Massachusetts. Now for Logan International Airport to Andover, Massachusetts, it's about 20 bucks again to take public transportation to get to the Andover train station. And then your Uber to a hotel will typically be anywhere from 15 to $20. Now that I've given you all that information, how do I travel there? I think it would be reasonable to expect if you're doing a trip like me to spend $1,000 to head down to the rendezvous. Some of you may be able to do it for far cheaper, especially if you're carpooling down with some friends and splitting costs that way. If you do have a friend you can split a hotel room with, it makes it far cheaper as well. Rather than spending 400 bucks for two nights, you can split it two ways and spend 200 bucks per person. If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below, like the video, hit that notification bell if you wanna see more of my content. I really appreciate those of you who share this content on your social media platforms and with your friends. It really helps me a lot and motivates me to continue doing what I'm doing. Much love and take care and I hope to see you at Rendezvous soon.